Today I'm going to talk about the ending of Black Mirror Season 4, Episode 3, Crocodile, while adding some clarity to the overall story. So no doubt there will be spoilers ahead for the entire episode and any other episode listed right there. And with that said, here we go. In Crocodile, we follow Mia, someone who helped cover up a murder. After her ex-boyfriend Rob accidentally hit and killed a biker, 15 years after the accident, Mia is a mother and a respected architect. And Rob is sober and trying to right his wrongdoing by sending the biker's wife an anonymous letter. Mia kills Rob in the hotel room, fearing that his confession will be traced back to her. Outside of the hotel, a man gets hit by an automated pizza delivery truck from the company Fences Pizza, the same chain restaurant that delivers pizza to Robert Daly's apartment in USS Callister. A woman named Shazia works for an insurance company and is assigned to do research on the accident that happened outside of the hotel. Using an intrusive device, she accesses memories of witnesses that eventually lead her to Mia. Our protagonist for Crocodile was originally supposed to be a man. The actress Andrea Riseborough, who plays Mia, had another part in mind when she was brought in to read the script. But after looking over the story, Riseborough found the protagonist's journey to be really interesting. So she made the request for the male lead to be changed to a female. After some debate, creator Charlie Brooker and executive producer Annabelle Jones rewrote the script so Riseborough could play Mia. Annabelle Jones later commented on this by saying, How often do you see a mother reduced to this level of desperation? I'm going to pause this analysis for one second because I want to take the time to properly address something very important to me. Something that's been keeping me up at night. Just a little disclaimer. This is either pure speculation or so absolutely f insane that it has to be true. I'm talking about how Crocodile is the prequel to 15 Million Merits. Hear me out. Black Mirror is known for its references and easter eggs, all hinting at the fact that all the episodes are happening in the same universe, but at different points in time. And speaking of easter eggs, there are an outrageous amount in Crocodile, but the majority of them are referencing 15 Million Merits. When Shazia tries to get information on Mia from the hotel, the man at the front desk tells her that hotel management has become more strict about the private of their guests. As he further explains, ever since that thing with what's his name, the judge of hotshots, referring to Judge Hope from the show Hotshot from 15 Million Merits. When Mia's setting up her alibi after she murdered Rob, she orders room service and purchases an adult film. When browsing, the second title Mia scrolls past is Wraith Babes, which is Judge Wraith's channel from the world of 15 Million Merits. This proves that the hosts are alive and working in whatever point in time Crocodile takes place in. Before her presentation, Mia is referred to to as one of the most innovative architects of her generation. We also see that she's been featured in magazines and has won a fair amount of prestigious awards, further explaining how much of a promising career Mia has. Mia, being an architect, could have designed the facility that all of the cyclists were living and working in. The company that built this structure and community could have collaborated with channels like Hotshot and Wraith Babes. When practicing her presentation, Mia mentions that she's been asked to share her vision of the future, and continues with looking around at a world of injustice, intolerance, and huge environmental challenges. Speaking of environmental challenges, one of the biggest challenges in that category is renewable energy. In 15 million merits, the stationary bikes supposedly generated power. And the most tragic event that shaped Mia was Rob hitting a cyclist and her helping dispose of the body. So it makes sense that cycling is the main focus of the building. As we are only shown one cycling chamber out of the thousands that are supposedly in the structure. When Rob tells Mia that he's gonna send in an anonymous letter, Mia tells him 15 years. 15 years the f shame, the f guilt. 15 years, 15 million merits. Okay, that one was a little bit of a stretch, but still. When Mia goes to the construction site to dispose of Rob's body, we see the concept art of the finished product with the rectangular rooms, something that could easily be converted into the chambers we see in 15 million merits. The song that plays on the street during the accident is called Anyone Who Knows What Love Is by Irma Thomas. The song makes an appearance in two other Black Mirror episodes, in White Christmas when Beth sings during karaoke, and in 15 million merits when Abby auditions for for Hotshot. In Crocodile, the song is not just referenced like it is in White Christmas, but it's continuously used throughout the episode and playing at crucial moments in the story, just like in 15 Million Merits. So I am convinced that Crocodile is a prequel to 15 Million Merits. Either way, that's just a theory. For all we know, Bing, Abby, and all the other cyclists could have just been cookies. The device used by Shazia is referred to as a corroborator, a name inspired by an accident Charlie Brooker witnessed back in 2005, where a man was hit by a car at Clapham 
Tottenham Junction in London. When police asked him questions like how fast was the car going, Brooker couldn't really remember the details of the event, and he thought, wouldn't it be useful if there was a gadget that let you cooperate what all the witnesses actually saw? And some elements from this encounter also inspired a lot of key moments in Crocodile. The device was simplified down and given a more 80s style to it. When talking about the design of the recaller, the series production designer Joe Collins mentioned, laptop screens are very flat these days, with everything on the surface. But with that, we wanted a lens on the front, and deep within it are your memories. The part of the device that attaches to the subject's head looks extremely familiar, almost like a cyberpunk version of the more polished and advanced device Kelly Norky used to access San Junipero. In Black Museum, we see that the San Junipero device was invented on the 10th floor of St. Juniper's, starting with the experiment of trying to send signals from Rat Kenny's brain to Rat Hector's brain, using a transmitter and a synaptic receiver. In the Pain Addict story, this research led to the communication of physical sensations, and that research also led to the transfer of consciousness. As we see Carrie getting her consciousness transferred with a bulkier version of the receiver, then we see the final version as Haynes puts it on Clayton's head to transfer his consciousness. So the device in Crocodile must come from the same research project that started with Kenny and Hector. Like the Pain Addict's device in Carrie's consciousness transfer, the corroborator, or recaller, was just another byproduct of this inhumane research. By the way, the guy who was hit by the pizza delivery truck was definitely at fault. When looking at the memories of the incident, we can see that the guy was just not aware of his surroundings. Before crossing the street, he was distracted by the girl in the yellow jacket. And if you pay close attention, you can see an overwhelmingly nervous expression on his face when she looks at him. The man even admits, well, I went to cross the road, wasn't really thinking about anything, proving that him crossing the street at that moment was just more of an impulsive decision. He takes no precautions before crossing. He doesn't stop to look both ways or use a crosswalk, and he is looking at the ground the entire time. With some guy randomly walking out into the street, I think the automated truck did the best it could do when trying to make a stop out of nowhere, especially during the snowy conditions it was driving in. Any human that would have been in the same position as the truck would most likely have done more damage than just hurting the guy's arm. A question that I hear a lot is, why is the episode titled Crocodile? The director of Crocodile, John Hillcoat, said his interpretation was, the story's cruel logic has a deadly vice-like grip, akin to a crocodile's jaw. Charlie Brooker explained that the title actually originated from an analogy he used when writing an earlier version of the script. He originally intended to have the protagonist witness their mother die at a very young age, making that person grow up to always be on edge and fearful of the world. So the analogy he used was, if you were to put someone into a simulation where you're on a boat ride in a jungle, you think that it would be a peaceful boat ride. But if a crocodile attacks you within the first few minutes, you'd assume it was more of a horror game. As he said, you'd think from that point on, I could get attacked at any moment, and you can never relax and enjoy the rest of that boat ride, because you think it's a crocodile attack simulator. And said the title stuck, even though the story completely changed. And then the title didn't actually make sense, but it's also weirdly fitting. The title is still fitting. One of the more common theories for Crocodile was that it was referencing Crocodile Tears, a phrase that originated from the ancient belief that crocodiles shed tears while consuming prey. So the phrase means that the person is expressing an insincere display of emotion, crying over events that they caused when they were actually okay with how things transpired. We see Mia kill one person after another, crying after each murder, even though she had the choice to stop killing, shedding crocodile tears every time. Memory playback is also a huge part of Crocodile, and coincidentally, crocodiles are the most intelligent reptiles and have extremely good memory. Relating to Mia and how she vividly remembers the traumatizing event that happened 15 years ago. Or the title could also relate to the fact that Mia is a cold-blooded killer. The Icelandic backdrops were representative of that very thing. Hilko claimed, The strange, vast, primeval landscapes with blackened soil felt like they could enhance the cruel, inescapable logic of Mia's fatal choices. The title could also relate to the way Mia carries out her murders, as crocodiles hide beneath the surface of the water and then attack seemingly out of nowhere, as none of the victims were expecting someone who's a parent and a well-known architect to be carrying out these murders. Some of the visuals represent the unpredictable nature of Mia when she is in the hotel room with Rob. When Mia is up against the wall, the artwork behind her is almost an exact copy of the 1891 painting, Surprised, or Tiger in a Tropical Storm by Henry Rousseau, a painting that consists of a tiger pursuing its prey somewhere in the jungle. In the hotel room, Mia stands over the spot where the tiger would be seen in the middle ground of the painting. So with Mia hovering over this spot, it's implying that she is the predator. Also, in the hotel room, there 
shares the screensaver with Mia's name on it. The screensaver consists of individual droplets hitting the surface of water, symbolic of the ripple effect and how the traumatic event will continue to affect the world around her. And with each kill, it's like a new droplet hitting the water, causing more ripples and making it virtually impossible for Mia to cover up her crimes. The song Anyone Who Knows What Love Is plays throughout the episode, a song appearing in other episodes like White Christmas, but is heavily used in both 15 Million Merits and Crocodile. In a lot of my analysis videos on Black Mirror, I mentioned how Black Mirror is a show that typically focuses on modern or future tech that is supposed to be used for widespread good, but ends up getting corrupted and ruined by humans. This song is representative of that very thing. It's a song preaching about love in a world lacking empathy. A song standing for something pure and innocent, getting thrown into the fire and ruined the same way the technology is. In 15 Million Merits after Abby performed the song, Judge Hope claimed it was the best piece of singing we had this season. But then Abby gets an offer to go on Wraith's channel which is just pornography, because they already have too many singers. With the compliance drink as well as the audience and the judges pressuring her, Abby gives in. On Wraith's channel, she is over sexualized and miserable. In Crocodile, Shazia abuses the song, using it to forcibly extract memories from her witnesses, and Mia listens to it when trying to figure out who else Shazia talked to that day, and find anyone who knew where Shazia was going, with the full intent to kill them. With other episodes like Black Museum and Archangel, Season 4 is the season of experimentation. In Crocodile, when the man gets the device put on his head, he says, I feel like a specimen. Kind of like how in Archangel, when Marie asks if the device was tested, the woman from the Archangel facility replies with, I mean, she's not like a guinea pig. Then in the next episode, we see that a guinea pig, which can also be referred to as a specimen, became a crucial part of the story. In the end, Mia murders Shazia's husband and the little kid, killing off an entire family, essentially trading one family for her own. But after all of that, we learn that the little kid was blind, and Mia neglected to acknowledge the guinea pig in the room, something that witnessed her murder the child. The reason the little kid was blind was because, as Brooker put it, the fact that it's a blind baby, and it sounds weird to say this, was part of a joke, intended to just be some really dark humor. It was said that this episode had more of a Fargo-esque tone during the conceptualization of it. After hearing audience reactions to the ending, Brooker claimed, I thought if people were going to say anything, they'd say it was a sick joke, but they seem to instead say it's too much. All Mia had to do was keep her mask on. Rule number one when committing a crime, don't take your mask off until you're actually gone from the crime scene. So Mia didn't accomplish anything and they used the recaller on the guinea pig. And some people claim that getting a clear picture from the guinea pig was nearly impossible, because guinea pigs rely on other senses more than they rely on their eyesight. So the vision of this specimen isn't that great. However, even if the police get a blurry image, they'll be okay. Earlier in the episode, Shazia finds Mia from a zoomed in and extremely blurry picture she got from the doctor's memory. She then scanned through a database and found a face that matched the image. This kind of method was done on her own personal computer, and was even done on her smartphone. So I'm assuming the police would have no issue doing this. But then another question comes up. Like, how would they even get the guinea pig to recall the memory of the incident? Shazia confirms that the police had the recaller for a lot longer than anyone else, as insurance companies just started using the device recently. As Shazia says, not since last year. We all have them now. Guinea pigs rely on other senses like hearing and smell, stuff that we've seen Shazia use to better extract memories from the girl in the yellow jacket and the man who got hit, using the smell of the brewery and the song that was playing at the time. From this, we can assume that the police are using similar methods, but because they've had this technology for a lot longer than insurance companies, they must have more efficient methods of using the recaller on an animal. Forensics could analyze the crime scene and reproduce some of the noises from the murder and how they suspected it went down. Shazia was right when she said the guinea pig will be good for Ali, because it was Kajor the lodger that had the memory of Mia's identity. Privacy was no doubt a very prominent theme in this episode. Crocodile was inspired by Black Mirror Season 1, Episode 3, The Entire History of You. In that episode, we follow Liam, a man who lives in a world where everyone has an implant in their head, allowing them to record and play back any moment in their lives. When talking about the development of Crocodile, executive producer Annabelle Jones stated, So we just love this idea of what would happen when your memories are no longer private. What would happen to the memories we conceal to ourselves, and how out of control can that get? In the entire history of you, Liam's life consists of him playing back and analyzing memories he had throughout the day. And we see that it's not just a private recording of his life. Liam is having to show his past 24 hours to TSA workers in order to board a plane. Liam also has to share a redo of all of his memories from the entire quarter at his job. So the employer gets to look over 
over a big chunk of his recordings. In Crocodile, laws are passed where it becomes legal for police to use the recaller to access someone's mind, also allowing private companies to have the same kind of power. When it comes to immorally extracting information from the mind of anyone who could be associated with the case, Shazia pushes the fact that it's a legal requirement, and treats it like the norm. This also implies that privacy was gradually eroded from their society, kind of like how citizens in the United States were repeatedly told, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. And we know that in the US, the government is accessing our phone records, tracking our location at any given moment, tracking what you buy and what you own. They also receive your emails, messages, and any other documents from a boatload of online services, and still have the ability to hack into your devices. But we slowly become more numb to these facts as it just becomes a norm in our society. Shazia even claims private stuff is private stuff, and says that she's not interested in anything else. But we see Shazia witness embarrassing and private stuff from the people she interviews. But the fact that she gets to see it makes it not private. Bottom line, there is no privacy when people have the ability to unethically obtain some private information. So there is no privacy when forcibly using the recaller. In Crocodile, we follow two mothers, both of them smart and good at their jobs, as well as being very family oriented. Mia commits murder trying to keep her family together, and Shazia is trying to provide for her family by working hard and getting bonuses. And they both end up in the shed because of these unethical ways of obtaining information. This episode is a prime example of the saying, legality doesn't always equal morality. For a device like the recaller being so intrusive, you think it would be more restricted and heavily regulated. But police and insurance agents do not need consent from the subject they're extracting information from, as the person's mind is invaded for just being a potential witness for an accident. Kind of like a physical manifestation of the lack of privacy we have online. The entire point of the law that allows these companies to use the recaller on practically anyone was most likely to prevent crime. But we see that in this case, it only worsens it. In Black Mirror, we consistently see this trend of technology getting corrupted because this new technology can fix issues like replacing bees or help find who's at fault in an accident. But it cannot fix human nature. Obviously, Mia didn't have to kill anyone. None of Mia's actions are justified. Mia killed Rob knowing that they would find a way to trace the letter back to him, and she would end up getting caught in the process. But then we see Mia kill Shazia and her family because she couldn't have anyone with the memory of her name or identity, and the recaller gave Mia the ability to track them down and leave no witnesses. So if the recaller did not exist, Shazia wouldn't have found Mia through unethical practices, and three more murders wouldn't have happened. When in the shed, the tables turn on Shazia, after Mia ties her up and uses the device on her. In this moment, Shazia is now experiencing what it's like when you're not able to lie, and when you have someone accessing your memories without your permission. We see what it's like when this technology gets into the wrong hands, and the importance of private stuff actually staying private. Right before Mia takes Shazia's life, Shazia mutters an Islamic prayer, which can be translated into, we belong to God and to him we shall return. In this moment, Shazia accepts her death, as she fully understands the darker side of this technology, and how the information she has been obtaining shouldn't have been taken in such a casual manner, as some desperate criminals will do anything to make sure the past stays in the past. In the end, Mia's kid and the rest of the students are singing a song from the musical gangster comedy Bugsy Malone. The song is titled You Give a Little Love and is the outro for the musical. It begins playing after a massacre, which is followed by everyone coming to the realization that they can end this cycle of killing and just be friends. In the end of Crocodile, one of the last lyrics we hear is you know you're going to be remembered for the things that you say and do. These lyrics are hinting at the fate of Mia and how there is no running from the murder she committed. The cops walk into the auditorium confirming that the guinea pig helped to identify Mia. You're going to be remembered for the things that you say and do is also representative of the fact that in this age of mass surveillance, someone is always watching. After using the recaller, the police are able to catch Mia, but we are left knowing that this invasion of privacy will always do more harm than good. That's all I had to say about Crocodile. In the past week or two, this was an episode that I saw a lot of people request. So if you guys want to see me analyze any particular episode of Black Mirror, feel free to comment the name down below. And remember to tell me your thoughts on the prequel to 15 Million Merits Theory. Also, if you love Black Mirror, definitely check out my Black Mirror Ending Explained playlist, full of analysis videos just like this one. And definitely subscribe to support this channel. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next Black Mirror Ending Explained. Explained.